Okay, hi, welcome. This is the screencast for Unit 3 and the concepts of turtles and indexing. Um, this is going to be a reintroduction to uh, Python turtles, um, objects and methods and attributes, and um, a new concept of indexing a sequence. All right, so let's jump right in. You should make a copy of the Replit starter project, which will be a turtle Python project. And there's a bunch of starter code already in here, right? Such as the import statement for turtle right at the top. Um, but we'll jump into our new concept right away, which is that of an index value. Right? And an index value is going to allow us to select an item from a sequence. Sequences are things such as um, a string. So you could pull out a character from a string would be an example, or an element tuple would be another example. And to use index values, we have to use a new uh, language syntax feature, which is the square brackets. Example, those are right above the enter key on your keyboard brackets look like that and these will allow us to select an item by index value okay right, so for our example of how to use index values we're going to look at a string that we're going to create a variable for and uh, the string is going to store the characters to spell turtle in all caps right and to make this easy to visualize Right, I've put this string example up above in a big comment block here. And this is going to show that uh, indices in the positive direction are going to start at zero. So positive indices start at zero, which is always the first element of a sequence. Okay. So for turtle, turtle starts with a capital T, and that character is going to be assigned the index value of zero since it's the first element and then in the positive direction you'll just count up and assign every character thereafter um, the next number okay. and then in the negative direction python is unique in the fact that it has negative indices so negative indices are going to always start at negative one that's always going to be the last so if you wanted to access the last element or E of turtle, you'd use the negative one index value. And then in the negative direction, right, the um, characters will be assigned in negative ind index value, <clears throat> counting in the negative direction going to the left. And that's how the indices get assigned. Okay, so if we actually had that string stored like we have right here, we could access all the individual elements in that string by indexing into our string. So take our string, use the square bracket syntax, syntax to index in, and access the element you want. So if you want the T, right, you would index in, grab the T here from the string. Right? And then you can use this same syntax to access all of the other characters. So the one index, it would be the next uh, element. And keep doing this so you got the two index so the first three indices grab the first three characters okay. the very last um, character in turtle is e right? we can easily access that by using either the positive or in negative indices but um, if you want the last one it's often easy to just use the negative one value Again, right, negative one is always the last. Same way that zero is always the first element. So this T, for example, can be accessed using string sub three. Okay, or we 
it could be accessed using string sub negative three. So both the negative three and the positive three, if you look up on our template up above, are going to access that second t in turtle. And if we print those out, you can see that both of them will access that t for us. And the same can be said for the L. You could access this using the positive four. Or the negative two. Both should access that same character in turtle, the L. Okay. Um, now this goes for any sequence, right? So we just looked at the example of a string. Right? But remember, we know some other sequences now, such as ranges. In our example here, of all the ninja turtles is a people. Right? So we've got all the names of the Ninja Turtles, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello stored in a names variable. Um, and then all the colors, the turtles in a colors variable. Right now, something that you may not have run across yet is this idea of a constant value. And a constant value is just in all caps or all capitals. Variable name. And all that means is that the value of the variable will never change. And this is not something that's strictly enforced by Python or anything. This is just a naming convention. So there's only four Ninja Turtles. Their names are not going to change. So I'm going to name their variable name, the tuple that holds uh name the tuple all caps names just like i'm going to name their colors all caps colors right because i've ordered these such that leonardo is blue Raphael is red michelangelo is orange and donatello is purple right those are all the order of them and the tuple corresponds to their color and i don't want that to change either so i'm going to make these constant values right now, quick challenge, using the index, uh, uh, the indexing into a sequence we just looked at, can you print Leonardo is the color blue using indexing? Okay, go ahead and pause the screencast and give that a shot, see if you can achieve that. Okay, so you'll notice if you tried that, that from the names tuple, you index in and grab the first element, you're going to get Leonardo. And then from the colors tuple, you index into that same position, you can pull those values out and say that Leonardo is the color blue. Um, so that's how that works, right? Whatever position you put in is going to pull out that value. Now, oftentimes we want to access these inside of a loop. Um, and this is extremely common. This is an extremely long, uh, common line of code that's going to allow you to access index values of a sequence. So whatever the sequence is, if you want to access the index values of that sequence, you can write a for loop to do so. You can say something like for index, and often you'll say for i, you'll see very, very often as well, in range len of names, for example, right? the Ninja Turtle names that we have up above. 
And if you think about it, if you, you access the range len of names, the len of names, if we evaluate that first, which it would be by Python, is going to be four because there's four Ninja Turtles. So four. And we get if we get range four, we're going to have range um, up to but excluding four. So zero, one, two, and three. And that corresponds nicely to the index values of our turtles. Zero index, one index, two index, three index. So four i in range len of whatever sequence is always going to access the correct index values for the given sequence. Right? So this is useful right, for things like printing sequences of equal length in two columns which is what the example we're going to use here. So if you want to get the turtles' names and the turtles' colors to print out next to each other, you could print out their names, pull out the correct name using the index value, and then the color. Um, from the colors tuple, again, using the index looping variable that we uh, have created, space here too. And then if I run that, <coughs> Leonardo is the color blue, Raphael is the color red, etc. cetera. Um, and in this case, we have is the color here, but if we wanted to print this in columns nicely, we could easily do that too using our backslash t and possibly print it in columns you can see here that the raphael on the output wasn't long enough so the red gets put into a separate column you'd have to handle for that if you wanted that print out so i think i'll keep is the color instead for now all right so that's how indexing works uh, the second half of these notes is going to be a refresher on object-oriented programming. So a reminder of how this works, right, because the first lab of this unit is going to be using turtles. So remember about an object. An object is just a software model uh, for a real, real object, and it bundles data and behavior together. So this is useful for modeling real-world objects like a turtle. And objects have two important features, one being methods. These are behaviors or actions the software object has, such as the turtle's ability to move forward, turn right, or change its color. It also has attributes, right? characteristics, data associated with an object, right? sometimes called instance variables. Right? So a turtle has a certain color, a certain position on the canvas, a certain shape. These are different characteristics of the turtle, which can change right, when methods um, are run on each object. Okay, um, So we're going to use the Ninja Turtles here, continue using that uh, example. We're going to create a turtle. So we'll create Leo first, Leonardo. And Remember, when you create a turtle, you're going to access the turtle module and the capital T turtle class to initialize the object. So this is going to be create a capital turtle object from the turtle module by calling the class So remember, you'll have a variable here that you'll create that gives you access to this turtle object. And the turtles are going to default to, to be a certain way. We can change that by, by writing some code. Now remember, we don't have to memorize this stuff, right? And we didn't like write this code. Um, uh, 
So we didn't write code for a How do we know how to use it? It's a great question. All right, so remember, the way we did this is we basically Googled Python docs for a turtle. So if you just Google Python documentation for a turtle, this will get you access to the turtle documentation. And that's what, what you can use as a resource for figuring this stuff out. Uh, the online textbook also has some some resources there all right and then once we have one turtle we can create multiple turtles so for example michelangelo we could say mikey turtle dot turtle right, and when we run this our turtles are going to be initialized um, on the screen although they don't appear to be showing up yet so we'll hopefully they'll show up when we start moving them <clears throat> okay so let's um let's demonstrate running a method on a turtle so we'll start with leonardo here so remember that leo one method you can run on a turtle is the shape method which can turn its shape into a turtle for example so let's um, make the shape turtle, and then let's also change the color to the color of Leonardo. Remember, we have this stuff saved in a tuple. You just access colors zero. That should be the color for Leonardo. And there he is. He showed up now. All right, so he starts at... Um, at, at zero, zero on our canvas down below. All right, let's do the same for Michelangelo. Let's make Michelangelo look like a turtle. So we'll say Mikey.shape turtle, and then Mikey.color colors one, I believe. We scroll up. Um, nope, two. So Michelangelo is the third turtle in our tuple. So the third value. Is going to be the second index value. And there he is. All right, so remember what we did here is we ran a method on an object to change, in this case, the shape, right? Same could be said for the one below here. Ran a method and object to change color. Right, so the methods use this dot notation to run on an object. Right? And by running on an object, they change attributes. So the attribute of a turtle's shape gets changed to be a turtle. And the attribute of a turtle's color gets changed from default black to blue in the case of um, Leonardo. Okay. Um, now let's look at moving a turtle. <clears throat> All right, so remember, we have methods to do that. One such method is forward. So in pixels, we can move Leo forward. There's also methods to turn the turtle. So we can move turn, move again. Remember what happens when you do that is your turtle will move and draw on the canvas as long as the turtle's pen is down. Right? And you can see the default state for the pen is it's on the canvas. So when you start moving right away, your turtles will draw. Okay. Now, this unit, we're working on for loops and sequences. So you can anticipate that we're going to start using for loops, right? So I just showed you how to draw like one corner of a square, two sides of a square. Can you use a for loop to draw the entire square with Leo? Right, go ahead and pause the screencast and see if you can anticipate how you might do that.
All right, after trying to draw a square, you may recognize that there are four sides in a square. So you can create a loop to run four times. Great way to do that is to say 4i in range 4. And then each time around the square, you want to say Leo dot forward to draw the side. So let's say, let's make this one 200 uh, pixel side length. Right, and then when you get the end of drawing a side length, you want to uh, not turn, but let's say move right 90 degrees. And therefore, you can get Leo to draw a 200 side length square. All right, so we could do the same for Michelangelo. So Mikey's starting at the um, the beginning, maybe right after we uh, initialize Mikey and change his color. We'll turn him left to ninety degrees. He'll be facing up on the canvas, and then maybe at that point we will say Mikey inside of our for loop we'll say Mikey dot forward hundred and Mikey dot left ninety. Let's see what happens when we do that. So Leo will draw first. Then they'll take turns drawing the sides of the square. And we'll finish. All right. So, a couple challenges to finish here. Um, see if you can create the last two turtles. Right. Make them the right color. All right. And then draw two more squares in different locations. So see if you can move them around a little bit, and then include these uh, turtles in the drawing of a square such that you end up with four different colored squares for the four colors of the Ninja Turtles. All right, and that will be, and that will wrap up this set of notes on a reintroduction to turtles and indexing.